I can. Uh, Dave, Mr. Mr. Singh said that he was going to be in attendance, but I could call it to order and he can just pop in. Yes, you can. That's fine. Um, so I would like to call today's meeting, Thursday, November 29th, um, Economic Development Committee Strategic Planning Session to order. We all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number three, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Hearing that there are none, may I have a motion to accept the agenda as I make that motion. So second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Approval of the minutes for from November 8th's meeting. Uh, Mr. Sh Mr. Vice Chair and Mr. Chairman, now that you're here, I would just like to tell you that there was a typo in the minutes that were sent out to you. I have since corrected it, but if you look at the bottom of the minutes, it says the next meeting date will be um, January 22nd, 2019. But the, I have corrected that for Mr. for Chairman Singh to sign, that the next was today, and the meeting minutes are going to be signed today, just so you're aware. Well, I'm, I'm going to turn item 4.1 over to our chair, who just walked in. So, Mr. Chairman, we are on the approval of the minutes. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Nancy. I move their approval with the notable um, correction. Second. Any discussion? Heard the motion. And second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Thank you. It's passed. Nancy, be sure to put in the minutes that I was four minutes late. I will, sir. Don't worry. <laughs> that is passed. Who there are our minutes? That's a lot. <laughs> Uh, item 5.1, public comment. Anybody sign up to do mm -hmm. that? No. So remind everybody that uh, uh, our minutes are recorded. And uh, a good friend from the press is here. So uh, please use nice language. Absolutely. Strategic planning session. So I'm going to turn it back over to uh, uh, Mr. Braddock who is uh, our leader in this initiative. Absolutely. So we have the privilege of our wonderful facilitator again here with us today. Uh, so Mr. Prakowski, thank you so much for uh, being here again. And uh, we're, we're going to turn it over to you to pick up where we left off. Very good. And sorry for making it formal. I know you like to just go by John. I do. <laughs> Mr. McCluskey was my father. <laughs> a quick review. Gary, you said you had a chance to talk to the mayor and the town. Well, manager. very informally. So I think we're on the right track. Okay. We'll just leave it at that. So a quick vision statement then. Reduce economic cyclicality through a balanced and four-legged focus on strategic initiatives, which include travel and tourism, agricultural support services, the retirement community, and light industry. Any problems? Then we shall go forward. Gary, uh, thank you for putting the strengths up on the board. These are the six most important that we all agreed on last time. I think they're incredible. You guys uh, have an awful lot going for you here. Let's talk about the bad stuff now. Let's just kind of brainstorm the weaknesses and then we'll go through the voting procedure. Uh, I think there's a lack of a collaborative effort with, with the county and other municipalities in the, the greater Leland area. When you get too many groups working in the same sandbox, you wind up splitting your business leadership and the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Well, Albert, 
two. Passing. Two. Well, I two. Two. I'm sorry. sorry. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I've heard about that one. I think in a in an effort to address that one, John, uh, Michael Braddock and I uh, met with the uh, chairman of the county commission two weeks ago, Mike. Three. Two and a half. Three. Prior to that meeting, we met with uh, Gary Vidmar, so you know he knows what we're doing. And uh, the purpose of the meeting that Michael and I had with uh, Mr. Williams was to talk about uh, what the county's doing and to make him aware of what we're doing, and that there's an initiative down in Calabash also, uh, and. Um, talking about the timing being perfect, John, because there's a new president coming into the community college. Uh, there's a new superintendent of schools coming in. So, you know, we reach out and we embrace the education system uh, to look at uh, what's needed in the trained workforce and all the things that we need to be talking about from a collaborative effort. Uh, that was three weeks ago. About oh, three weeks ago. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Williams took copious notes, but uh, uh, we, we kind of left the ball on his part in his, uh, in his playground to call such a meeting and see what was uh, what we can share and get, get move this out of a weakness into a strength. Let me uh, share my experience uh, with that issue. Uh, SCORE has many other uh, co-parties that are involved in helping small businesses. You've got the small business centers in Brunswick County Community College and Cape Fear. You've got the SPTDC, you've got the SBA, the list goes, the, the Women's Coalition, the list goes on and on. And typically these people have viewed each other as competitors. Um, and that's gone on for like 30 years. And finally, two years ago, the current state director brought all of the parties together and formed what's called a coalition. And this coalition of once were competing parties now does joint advertising, one presentation to the community. It used to be the SCORE uh, did an annual banker's uh, breakfast where various industry leaders were brought in. Now the coalition handles that. It's a great opportunity for all of us to work together and trust each other. And the key word there is trust. That never existed before. So my message is you have hope. Well, Even you've got 30 years of bad experience. I think the theme should be one Leland, one county, one region. Yeah. Uh, but to get there, you're, I agree with you, John. You've got to have trust. Uh, and, uh, and Frank ought to be the guy to try to bring that all together. Well, that's why we went to him. And uh, Harbor Hope. Okay. What other weaknesses do you perceive? It's my understanding that uh, we don't have a lot of land available for industrial growth. Yeah. Land for hard to believe. But all the more reason to have a region. Land abounds from Calabash to the bridge. <laughs> It affects us, but you know what I learned and have been educated thanks to Gary that North Carolina is a statute state, Tell me and what that, that is not a strength. What does it mean? Well, you know the definition that I pulled out is a formal written enactment of legislative authority that governs a city, state, or county. Typically, statutes command and prohibit something or declare outright <clears throat> policy. How accurate is that? Spot on. <clears throat> Essentially, cities don't have and counties don't have the freedom to govern themselves. Right. They're literally governed by the state. What is it? Yeah, it's no home rule. There's no home, home rule. is just the opposite of statutory law. And it can't see. The states. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've tried a lot of it. We haven't tried that yet. Let's can try this side of the blue. Uh, <laughs> so the legis state legislature <laughs> literally rules the county and municipal governments in the state. Our, our ordinances, our zoning ordinances, are established by the state. I didn't know that. Yes. 
doesn't that also restrict, I mean, um, an ability for incentives? And well, it's like incentive that. agreements, it's annexation laws, it's, oh, it's oh, everything oh, oh, that, that, that is, you've got my attention now. So they control annexation, zone, what else? Um, incentives, 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 economic incentives. development incentives. Those are the major elements that would affect this one. Wow. So anytime you want to make changes to your zoning ordinance, you first have to look to the statute to determine whether what you want to add or delete is permitted okay. by statute. Okay. So you can't involuntarily annex an adjoining county property? Yes, you can. But it's a two-year process that goes on the ballot. Okay. And we are undergoing one right now. Uh, we're one year into an involuntary. Well, oh, I don't like to use the term involuntary. I'll use the term a town-initiated annexation. So we're one year into one currently. That started about a year ago. Annexation following certain rules, as I've learned, is a... Um, individual request, not a town request. So a person who owns a piece of property who wishes to be placed under the town must come forward and take the action to request that annexation, follow a process, go through that process, and make sure that you fit within the parameters. So what, I, what I've learned here then is that you couldn't entice a county property owner to voluntarily annex by offering a free sewer hookup. You have certain freedom to incentivize home uh, uh, property owners to uh, annex, but again, within strict guidelines of statutes. Yeah. yeah and I think uh, the one that's closely associated with that, which, you know, we don't have to go into the details of it. A weakness that the town of Leland has is that it is not uh, connected by continuous boundaries. Yeah, you mentioned that last time, and you gave me a lesson on that after the meeting. That's awful. So what do we call it? Not contiguous borders. Yeah. In Germany, we used to call that a dog's breakfast. <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah, thing. We can use that. that takes a minute. Anything else that you'd like to bring up? I think we're too close to South Carolina. That's the weakness. <laughs> well, I mean, seriously. Well, here's here's well, look the, at what they do to bring in business and industry right. to, to South Carolina. Okay, I didn't understand what you were <clears throat> where you were going. I, th I thought it was a geography thing. No, the, the, the challenge that you hear whenever the state is involved in right. a serious opportunity for some company I coming remember. in is that we are sandwiched between two states mm -hmm. that are yeah. much more successful. And yeah. guess what? Neither of them are a statute state. Neither of them have some of the same parameters on annexation and things of that sort that North Carolina has. So it's in the process not that there is a desire it's the fact that there's some existing structures in place that are hurdles or, as a professor, or barriers. Sorry. Yeah. As a professor at Chapel Hill said, North Carolina is a, a valley of humility between two mountains of conceit. <laughs> that would be Virginia and um, South Carolina. I don't know what the two were. I didn't think it was Tennessee. Yeah, make sure you know your job. Well. <laughs> And aren't they bound by any state statutes? Well, South that's Carolina. State that's uh, I'm just looking at the incentives that South Carolina yeah, has yeah. given to <clears throat> major industries that went yeah. from the western part of North Carolina to Greenville and Spartanburg. Right. And then uh, Charleston. Charleston uh, ate our lunch. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my former company owned Continental Tire. I think you guys almost got involved with them. but. South Carolina stole that plant. We too. did. Yeah, they, we, still we lost. Uh, we lost uh, BMW, mm -hmm. and we lost Michelin when I lived in Hendersonville. 
You ever seen that DMW plant? Uh, Maybe well, there's a lot. Yeah. 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 That was a mile from it. So mm -hmm. that was the place to work. Structure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I wrote one down in my notes, I don't know whether or not it's a true weakness, but I said there's a lack of formal early stage and growth venture organizations and a lack of nurtured pool of technology startups. Even in an area where we can't identify that there are pockets of opportunities that could sprout to become successful companies, we don't nurture that in the current environment that we have. It's an opportunity. That's so eventually it's going to come back as an opportunity. <clears throat> at what level? Is that a state problem, county, or uh, town level? Well, I, I would say that it, it, it grows up to become a problem with everybody above that, but I would I consider that a town problem. I mean, we're having to invite these kinds of opportunities into our area. It's not as though they're being grown here that I'm aware of. Am I wrong? You're right. You're right. We don't have any sort of unique identity. We're sandwiched between Wilmington. Everybody knows Wilmington. Everybody knows Myrtle Beach. Right? You pass through Leland going to Myrtle Beach and you pass through Leland going to Wilmington. So there's no unique identity here. Right? And we, somehow or another we've got to carve or create where there is no identity. We have to create an identity to say, here we are, and we want to join the big boys. Yeah, what's our unique selling proposition for yeah. for, for this area, for this town? <clears throat> you got a lot to offer. Maybe you don't advertise. I mean, I, I, I live in Southport. I didn't know that stuff. I've been here 25 years. Well, eight of the 25, anyway. Mm -hmm. But the point is that You've got a beautiful situation here, and nobody knows it. And then I think maybe to Chris's point, then I think maybe a weakness is we we have not crystallized a unique selling proposition, but our strengths will allow us to do that under the opportunities. I don't. Yeah. John? Yes, sir. Basketball game was so bad last night, I cut off the TV and actually started thinking about it. I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it. I've So I wrote down. Uh, this could be a weekly thing. <laughs> yeah. First time since I graduated 50 years ago, I'm actually looking forward to football season. <laughs> I, I wrote down a weakness. I think there's a, a lack of energy to unite the exceptional and diverse strengths of our region. And I don't know if that's, if I was thinking about just Leland or the whole county, but I just don't see a, a focus and an energized effort to speak as one as we mentioned earlier. I think it's very difficult for Leland to synergize the county and the surrounding communities. I think that's gotta be a county initiative. Yeah. But it's frustrating. Oh yeah, it's from where we sit. Sure, because we want to hell, we want to do something. And did you express that to <coughs> Mr. Williams? Uh, as a matter of fact, I did. And he said, he, he, he "Was he on TV when he couldn't say what he wanted to uh, say?" I don't know. He was playing with his phone at that part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not sure. If the, not sure if this is a weakness or not. We'll toss it up. And frankly, I haven't had as much time to think about it because my. My Badgers were beating NC State two days ago, so I haven't had as much time to think about this. But that being said, oh, um, oh. would you like to enter that in a few minutes? Uh, no, that will be <laughs> serious um, news. I, I don't think that there's a consensus amongst the population in Leland okay. um, about matters of relating to the growth of our community. And I think that that issues forth in a lot of complaints and criticisms by the town leadership uh, that has to fight through those rather than. Um, enjoy, I don't know, for lack of better words, the wind at their back by the population. Yeah, John, related somewhat to some of these issues, when you, while you're writing there, yes. this non-contiguous <clears throat> borders, could, could you just kind of do a slash 
on that one and put the and put the words uh, Leland name issues. There is no way to know every time you see the name Leland that it is really the town of Leland. It is so convoluted in terms of that. So the good and the bad that happens wherever that sign or that name appears gets an association with Leland, whether it's the town or just the name. So maybe to explain that a little further, because I live this. <laughs> First of all, you've got many facilities that have the Leland name right. associated with them that are not in the town. You've got the Leland Industrial Park, prime example. You've got Hawthorne at Leland, which is an apartment community that is not in Leland. Um, there are many pockets of unincorporated land and Belleville land in this non-contiguous area that people associate as Leland. Mm -hmm. Sure. So if there are cr crimes committed in these neighborhoods, <clears throat> it's a crime committed in Leland, right. even in, even though in many cases it's not. Or labor right. services. Can, can I also well. add, because the postal code is the same, yeah. and that has yeah. caused a great deal of confusion, yeah. mm -hmm. the zip code is the same, whether you're in Leland or not in Leland, right. et cetera, so people get very confused. Right. Winnebago, Belleville, mm -hmm. yeah. Nevada, unincorporated county areas, all have the same zip code. We may try awfully hard, but we won't get the zip code changed, <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> Let me add one. Um, poorly maintained DOT roads. <clears throat> so the two primary roads coming in and out of Leland, namely Highway 17 and Village Road, are both DOT owned and quote unquote maintained. So the gateway to our communities mm -hmm. are poorly maintained roads that we have no control over. As a small business owner, I have no objection to potholes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be recusing yourself. <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> You'll probably make it. So we get constant potholes. complaints from our own <laughs> residents about the condition of those roads and the garbage on those roads, and they're surprised to hear that we, we can't maintain them. Uh, we but, can't afford to maintain them. Well, one, we don't have the authority to maintain them. Yeah, that's interesting. And I think that's a drawback because, you know, just like the crime and stuff like that, there is no real clean vehicle, if you will, for communicating this information out to the communities and stuff. So the roads, the roads is one that, that's, that's a major issue, right? This is the first time in my life I've lived, ever lived in a community where the major thoroughfares are, can, are maintained by the state. Right? And the, the town has a few roads. The town has, what, 5,000 square, 5,000 linear miles? How many, how many miles? I'm not even sure offhand um, how many linear miles. It's a bunch. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bunch of linear miles that's, that's maintained by the town, but most of it is by the state. Mm -hmm. Well, no, the, the, the majority of the roads are maintained by the town, but the two largest mm -hmm. and primary roads are maintained, uh, by, the are maintained by the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in mm -hmm. terms of lineal mileage or feet, mm -hmm. it's far less than the town's, mm -hmm. but it is the focus point of folks that come and go through the yeah. Yeah. yeah, the example that would be made is this absolutely, um, one personally that I had to deal with, for the better portion of three weeks. Following Florence, <clears throat> one half of Mercantile Drive collapsed. <clears throat> there was no way to get by. Mm -hmm. it, it was over a pipe structure. And so the other half was at risk every day. It took DOT to come out and fix that. Even though, I don't know, tens of people traveled that road every day. It was the only way in and out of <coughs> that place. You know, and Believe it or not, it took pressure from a completely outside interest to get it fixed. So DOT stranglehold, I guess, is a good weakness. And not to belabor the point, but another element that surfaces from all this. <clears throat> so you got all these unincorporated areas in and around Leland that use our roads, mm -hmm. use our police force, 
use many services that the Leland residents pay for, but the unincorporated residents do not pay for. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would have thought the county would have to provide those services. The county does not maintain their roads. They're not in the road business. Okay. So developers build their the roads in the county, but nobody maintains them unless there's a private ownership entity or the POA that maintains them. Uh, they have their sheriff, uh, but they have interlocal agreements. So if the police from Leland are closer to the point of a, an activity, they will respond, whether it's in Leland or not. Some of these things are statements of fact rather than weaknesses that you can address. For instance, right. North Carolina is a state, it's a statute uh, state. Yeah. Yeah, okay, well, live with it, because it's not, that's not going to change. Yeah. That's right. Lack of a trained workforce looking towards jobs in the future. land uh, if you have uh, some uh, buildings that will, can house uh, high-tech uh, businesses um, that uh, I'm not talking about uh, assembly line manufacturing because mm -hmm. the land's not there you're right but uh, uh, not I'm about to say more than I know but uh, looking at uh, what we do have zoned where we could put up uh, buildings and people work from laptops and you know, why can't we become another uh, research triangle park or Silicon Valley right. if we have the workforce if we get our educational institutions to to sit down with the uh, the business leaders or the uh, recruiters that want to are looking for a, a place that uh, that uh, provides a quality of life, which I think is what we have, but that has to go hand in hand uh, with the trained workforce. We're not going to get these uh, uh, high-paid jobs. It's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. Well, I mean, you're saying, I mean, we, we could say that that's an off, uh, I mean, tech, the thing that I brought up, did you write technology isn't welcome? Yes, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, and so, I had to try and search for that. Um, I don't know that that's the overt weakness that we have, is, is that it's non-existent in terms of its appeal, if that's the right it's, thing. It's not welcome. I mean, not welcome in my mind is that there's an outright um, imperative that says, don't come back here. You know, there's a sign up that says, uh, high tech not welcome. I don't believe that's a statement, but then again, there's any there's no reason why high tech would come here. All right, I'll change the word for you. How about technology isn't encouraged? I, I don't know that that's yeah. I don't I don't I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, don't I, I don't agree. I don't know that I feel that I agree with that. I think it almost dovetails into the item actually right below it. We have not presented a per compelling case as to why technology should or would want to be here. Because if you look directly across the bridge, one of the fastest growing companies in, fin in FinTech is Live Oak Bank. And they are drawing in significant talent from all parts of the country. And that is just across the bridge from it. So I don't know that it's high tech isn't welcome because you also have Tech Mountain and you have these other incubator spaces. I, I think it's a matter of we haven't identified what we have to offer to these tech companies to allure them to mm -hmm. be in So is that more of an opportunity? I see that as an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, just let me ask a question. It runs with Forest as part of Cleveland, isn't that's, it? That's correct. Mm -hmm. So we've got all of that new construction that's going on there at the entrance, like Emerge Ortho, mm -hmm. and I see building going on continuously in the back there. Aren't you selling you guys kind of, you're selling yourself short here? 
I think you're incredibly attractive. Merge ortho could have gone across the bridge. We're incredibly attractive, Joe, but I think what, what, what's missing is, is that there's a couple of tie-ins between the workforce training, and I don't know if it's workforce training or workforce development that I would put there, simply because even if we had an infusion of some folks that were trained, we have no way of sustaining that. Mm -hmm. We need to have the high schools and the junior college developing programs so that there's a continuous flow of trained employees or trained workers that would join the workforce. That couples with the land for, for industrial growth, not necessarily, we're not talking about smokestack industry. We don't need smokestack industry in this town. Right. What we need is... Manufacturing methods. Manufacturing methods, uh, uh, shared office space, shared workspace and stuff like that where folks can actually work from home, where we can actually, okay, uh, you know, you don't have to go into an office. You can telecommute into the office. And I think that the Innovation Park is actually developing a space like that. Right? But we want to encourage more of that. Right? And the technology being welcome, the technology right being encouraged, I think. May I go here with that? Certainly. Mm -hmm. I just went brain. Start <laughs> 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 again. <laughs> just do it again. It's it's a, it's a combination of workforce development. Okay. Right. It's a combination of workforce development. Uh, marketing ourselves in a way that we become attractive to shared workspace, telecommuting, uh, light industry. And a marriage between technology and the education system so that we have a continuous flow of a trained workforce coming out of schools. Yeah, how did we ever lose the old trade school system? Uh, when you figure that one out, let me know, and then we'll both know. The, the, trade school, <laughs> the, the old trade school um, roadkill came from the belief that everything was four-year college. Yeah. We heard that yeah. message yeah. last time we met. Mm -hmm. I can answer that. They 31 years in the North Carolina Community College system. Our funding was based on FTEs, full-time equivalent students, right, as a general assembly. We got more money for students that were enrolled in liberal arts programs and, and training to, uh, to transfer to get a four-year degree at a university or a private college as opposed to the FTEs that were generated uh, and tied to the pay scale for applied technology, vocational, and technical programs. So, so many community college presidents, because the 58 community colleges are based on local autonomy. So the local president, local board said, well, we're going to get more money in, so we're going to. So we got away from the one that took us to the dance the first place. We got away from applied technology and went into liberal arts. We lost it at the high school level, too. We lost it at the high school level, too, because the guidance counselors, the English teachers, and the football coach made us feel bad. Uh, that there's something wrong with us if we weren't going to get right. to the university, right? Mm -hmm. There was a stigma attached to that. But there is an opportunity to Chris's point on, uh, and he mentioned education as part of the tech orientation and workforce development. The opportunity is we have a new president coming into Brunswick Community College, and his background is workforce development at another community college, uh, and a new superintendent coming in. So. I think that is a, the timing is perfect to sit down with those two leaders uh, and uh, raise their awareness level of what our needs are. It's uh, kind of restarting the uh, mm -hmm. uh, hit again the reset button. And I, I think you know, Mr. President, you make a good point because you know we all. It was mentality, you know, everybody needs a four-year degree. Everybody needs a four-year degree. Four -year degree. There was a lot of things that was moving offshore at the same time. GM, GM moved plants offshore. Ford moved plants offshore. Nobody wanted smokestack industry in their towns anymore because, you know, it, it just wasn't a call for it. 
And we got, and what happened was, is there was a shift. And when the paradigm shift and it became technology, writing code, developing computers, uh, engineering, and any kind of soft skills that you could have, those folks said, you know what? We don't want to be in the same basket anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to be, we want to do, a, we want to do the Google thing. Right. We want to do the Microsoft thing. Mm -hmm. We want to do the Apple thing. We don't want to be in a, you know, in these type of buildings anymore. And now there's that vacuum. And this is, this is where we are right now. In that vacuum between being a heavy manufacturer and being heavy in technology, we lost the focus on engineering and math. So John, an opportunity in that same space, because this is just near and dear to my heart, is that even in the greater Wilmington area, and I'm including all those successful things that my colleague over here, Mr. Braddock, mentioned in the form of the uh, Tech Mountains and the CIEs and things of that sort, there is not a maker or a fab space that is actively available to any young person or even an older person for that matter, <clears throat> to come in and take an idea to his first stage prototype or whatever. There is none to be had, period. And it is the vibrant heart of most innovation centers <clears throat> so, around the country. So business incubator. Business incubator, <laughs> fab and maker space, <clears throat> But smart space. Smart space is a key term. Isn't there a isn't there a business incubator at uh, Brunswick Community College? No. Uh, I don't know. Yes, there is. Or it's been lost. Yes, it's out, it's out on. Did you say no? I thought they lost it. It's just sat there on the. It's, I know not it's, a, it's a misbranded. I, I know too much. Well, no, I'm I'm not, I'm not arguing that. It's, <laughs> that is uh, I'm on the state of the art. <laughs> I'm just saying that the, the concept was introduced <laughs> and money was given. Uh, for right. an incubator facility to the community college, and I thought they had some space out there on, on Highway 74, 76 campus. They do. I think Bruce is implying that the space is misused. I'm, uh, I'm not arguing. Yeah. Well, and, and, and that same, set, that same vein, uh, not sure what it's currently being used for as well, but directly beside the Winnebago Post Office was a space that was, I think, a joint partnership with I think Brunswick Electric and the community college, and it was a basically a temporary startup, but I, to, to Bruce's point um, that we've had this discussion in a couple of meetings and I, I could not agree more. I think that's a, a weakness and an also, also an opportunity for a maker space. Um, I, I think in a, a potential weakness and opportunity that we also encounter um, is there's lack of public transportation. Um, so you, you have a skilled workforce, you have all of those things we're trying to create a, a walkable downtown. Um, <coughs> bike, you know, I know this is into the future, but you know, bike sharing opportunities where a public-private entity gets involved in bike sharing opportunities, where <coughs> uh, you know you, you create and cultivate a downtown. Um, you, I think, in, I think with that as well for an opportunity. I'm kind of talking all over the place a little bit, but. Uh, we have waterfront access. That, that could be a great opportunity to work at UNCW to create a marine biotech incubator space. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, something that we can grow into, something along, along those lines. I was going to offer is downtown. What do you consider downtown? Well, well, the, 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 there's, a current, there's been a movement for quite some time and as part of the 2020 growth plan, it is to make Village Road the downtown of, of Leland. It is to be the gateway district, if you will, of Leland, or as well Road. It's the uh, road we just came off of that okay. came off of right. pull into. Uh, so where like Hardee's and Bojangles yeah. and McDonald's and all. Meineke Car Care. Meineke Car Care. <laughs> when I built my building uh, five years ago, we had to put a bicycle rack as part of the building code. Uh, that, that was visionary. I mean, we haven't had a bicycle yet to park. <laughs> we we couldn't way. get the uh, certificate of occupancy until we had that damn thing set up. So, Here. something I was going to list under Here's weakness, but it really can be an opportunity. And this pairs with uh, what was Bruce was talking about incubator space and maker space. You need investment capital, you need investors, yeah. you need an investment community. 
That's why the city of Wilmington struggles. That's why Tech Mountain is becoming successful because they're attracting investment capital. That's why that Live Oaks Bank, that's the city. That's that's I'm talking one. about private investment yeah. Yeah. for companies, for private companies. Live Oak Bank is successful because it's stuck, his founding member is a high net worth individual that has attracted other high net worth individuals. PCD, <coughs> Fred Eshelman, high net worth individual that attracted investors. That's what Raleigh has, that's what the Triangle has, that's what Charlotte has, that's what the city of Wilmington struggles with, and that's why we can't attract the tech businesses, the startups, the young, very intelligent, sharp <coughs> individuals that need money to survive and advance their products. What kind of constraints are on that reserve? But let me, let me finish yeah. this off. The, the reason I see that as an opportunity, you've got dozens if not hundreds of high net worth retired individuals living in Leland mm -hmm. that have not been tapped. Maybe more than willing to invest their money into new businesses, but have yet to be invited to the table. The, the seed capital rounds in the United States are made up of mutual wow. high net worth investors. I mean, that's, that's, it's not individuals as much as it is aggregate communities of individuals who pool their interests in order to be able to support high tech growth. And there's a couple of those in Wilmington, but they invest their money in other cities. <laughs> yeah. They don't invest their money in Wilmington. <clears throat> I wonder why that is. That's an interesting idea. That's a whole discussion. That's, that's a visionary thing, yeah. I'll tell you. And Bruce and I have been part of organizations and conversations <laughs> for the last three years since I've been here talking about that, that problem. Okay, now back to my question. What kind of constraints, you know, there's that old saying, physician, heal thyself, when you're sitting on many millions of dollars. Can't some of that money be deployed for opportunities? That's, tech, that's taxpayers' money that's subject to how it can be spent. Uh -huh. That's that's not, we it's don't not have the freedom money. to invest in private companies. <laughs> now we, you know, and again, you got statutes that prevent you from spending okay. it, okay. or you may need to spend it. I'm not making excuses. There may be ways to use it better than we're, we're well, thinking about it, and we may have more freedom than we realize. But overall, there are a lot of restrictions. Understood. I mean, a, a, a property owner could either, through annexation or because they happen to be in the town of Leland, could um, be encouraged to put up a building that would be focused on makerspace fab in a smart space environment with all of the uh, touch points that would be very appealing. And I'm convinced the town would promote that. It would help communicate that and all of that. But it doesn't have to come through the town to do that. An individual who's willing to see that promise will invest in that. Yeah, but I think when we come to the actual rating strategies, we gotta, we gotta think about this one. Mm -hmm. but there's an awful lot of money sitting out there doing nothing. If you could incentivize it, you could fix a lot of those yeah. weaknesses. I agree with what Mr. Mancinelli saying, but I think also it goes back to <laughs> one of the things that we said earlier. We have a a unique, uh, a, a unique selling point. Yeah. We haven't marketed ourselves and said, you know what, mm -hmm. investors, here we are, we're Leland, we're the fastest growing town in the state of North Carolina. Come and visit us and see what we have to offer. We, the only way we're going to attract those type of things is if we make a lot of noise. The squeaking wheel gets the grease. Right. When we start to market ourselves and we start to say, we are, we're open to hearing what you have to offer. Come and work with us. Then we may start to see this shift. At the first session, I passed out a piece of paper, which was kind of the pathway forward with strategic planning. And once you clear those hurdles of getting complete buy-in from the town council and the mayor, part of that process is go public. And when you go public, uh, it might be interesting if one of our strategies is to try to encourage 
private investment capital from within the legal community itself, where these guys can make a decent return on investment? You know, who's not interested in 15%? How about threats? Nothing scares you, huh? Lawsuits. Yes. Lawsuits were with our with our neighbors. Not from within the community itself, but from with Navassa or Belleville, Speaks to Go. What would they sue you for? Well, I think we're in the midst of one right now. Yeah, we're in one now. Water, regarding water. Okay. I mean, that's a threat, you know. Sure. There's more, but... Uh, I mean, hurricanes and impact and current storms is, is currently active in people's minds. I mean, we've seen the impact of that with people who wouldn't mm -hmm. come to work for manufacturing <clears throat> methods just because, hey, I think I'm going to rethink that. Climate change. Um, and the impact of that from an economic standpoint. It's very, very difficult. I think it's, climate change isn't a threat because it's kind of global. I think it's the response to climate uh, climate catastrophe that's a possible threat. Are we prepared for the next warrants? Some of that I buy, some of it I don't. It took everybody out. You don't feel like you're alone. What an experience about came off the map. I know. Mm -hmm. think, of, think of Paradise Town in Florida. Think of Paradise. You know, yeah. If there's a natural calamity, are we prepared as well as we can be to protect not only our residences, but our businesses? Oh boy, there's going to be a spelling problem. Any catastrophes? Just think of it, your old girlfriend Jane. Calamity <laughs> 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 Jane. Uh, the opioid crisis is a threat to this area, and it is to this town naturally. Fair. And I don't think that <coughs> you have to overlook that. You, we need to address that as well as an ongoing concern. Economic cycle, a down cycle is a threat. And well, that's exactly why we're working on this. Analysis paralysis. Really? Mm -hmm. Here? We can sit here and talk about it all. Aggressive, the time. engaged town leadership? That, that, at that level, yes. But you know we've got to make sure that we don't overanalyze it because what's going to happen when they don't move to Leland, they're going to move to Southport, or they're going to move to you know somewhere. We really else. don't need to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're moving to Boiling Springs either. <laughs> but we don't want to overthink. We want to be able to to be nimble and to change quickly and to adapt to. Well, so we don't want to get over analytical. I mean, job job skills and uh, workforce availability is a threat. Right? I mean, it clearly is a threat because if you don't have a program, one that begins to create that, hence the opportunities that we have and sustain that, no one will come here. And at the same time, it's difficult to create an educated workforce that's technically oriented without any jobs to put them into. This is, that's a tough one. John, water quality, if word gets out about water, uh, that this area has terrible water quality, it's, it's going to be uh, devastating to yeah. folks does. bringing in. <clears throat> Seriously? Yeah. Uh, Gen X. Gen X. Oh. And all the other unidentified rat poisons that are in the water. <clears throat> John, I have one, but I, I'm not real sure what, you're gonna have to figure out what to call it. But I think it's a threat uh, if we, uh, our, our populace shifts towards majority retirees and it's a threat 
that uh, they're going to say, you know, I paid for all that back north of the Mason-Dixon line, so I'm not going to, I don't want my taxes to go up. I see what you mean. Yeah, I paid for all this education stuff for 30 years. You want me to start all over? Yeah, my kids, I got mine, now you get your ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good point. I want to see you spill urines. So, three opportunities. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Kind of weakness. You said you wanted to promote a retirement community, and over here you're preaching yeah. about aging demographics. Well, I think it's balance. Well, we know the, the very first meeting we had, we talked about a four-pronged economy. Right. That stool with four legs. Right. And um, you challenged me on agriculture, but still. I mean, we wrote it near verbatim. Yeah, uh, well, <clears throat> that's right. Thank you. But uh, but it is a dilemma when that's part of the vision, but it's also a threat. Yes. And by the same token, it represents your opportunity. Yes. These are the people with the money. These are the people that uh, investment capital. Yeah, at the fifteen percent, they could jump on board. That's right. And, and building on that too, the aging demographics is lack of engagement about these issues. In the aging demographics, people are the people in my neighborhoods are not engaged in these conversations at all. They're engaged in conversations about um, quality of life, but it has to do with doesn't have to do with the, the economic quality of the I'll bet you I could engage you with a 15% return on investment, Mr. Senior Citizen. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you, but right now there's just a lack of engagement uh, along the issues well, that are being talked about around We've got some work to do here. <clears throat> yeah. We're going to write a strategic plan and ultimately that, we're going to publish it. I'm just saying and that. I, I think that every yeah. citizen in Leland is going to get to see this. Three quarters of them will wind up direct in a dumpster, but maybe in a separate promotion. We start to talk about this pooled investment opportunity, and, and if people think they can make some, you know, you get two percent of the bank if you can get fifteen percent opportunity from a thing like this. Which would you do? We'll do a cool one-minute video for the majority of the crowd. <laughs> for the non-readers, hmm? for the non-readers, we'll do a video. You know, the, the aging <laughs> demographics is is not necessarily so much a threat as it is a lack of. Um, millennial population stated differently, right? I mean, the, the, those who graduate don't, don't, don't stay, stay here. Young life, basically. They, yeah, it's, they are out of here. They don't They're, have a yeah. They're looking for See, where the to go. circle at the end. That's of the correct. Day. That's correct. And so, the real threat is that our aging population will die and won't be replenished with anyone else. <clears throat> Just another aging population. I mean, that's uh, it, it's kind of a, a cyclical problem oh, yeah. and threat. All right, how about if we try to go through and narrow down this um, the weaknesses for now into things we can do something about? We can't fix them today, but we're on a five-year horizon here. Anything you, that we could conceivably do about workforce training? When you look to fresh start with BCC and a superintendent of schools, it seems like a natural. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a no brainer. No brainer. So we keep that. <clears throat> County and municipal collaboration. Hopeless? No. No, I feel that, that, we have, that could be an opportunity. So, yeah, that, that would we, be a start. We have an active opportunity right now in the form of the Leland Innovation Park, which has reached out and now has a very inclusive uh, group of participants. And, uh, we're active in that as well, we being the town. So I think uh, while it's a known weakness, it's one we're beginning to address. The next two are stated facts. We, there's no, you know, we can't create any more land. Right. <laughs> we, we, we can add it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, we can add it. We can add it. I spent sure. a lot of time thinking about that. <laughs> 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 
I had some really evil ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go down that road. No, no. <laughs> but, but annexation is an area that can be used, as is zoning, which is can be modified. And incentivizing isn't always money. It can be promotion, <laughs> support, and other things that endure value, jobs, things that come from those types of incentives. So it's not always about giving a check or providing funds. Uh, so there, there are clearly things you can work within those parameters. It's understanding. Are there any things you do or any places people can go that are for Leland residents only? Well, what's a Leland resident? The well, town of Leland? Somebody or pays ta uh, taxes in the town. Town of Leland resident. Yeah. Only? There only. are um, oh. reduced fees at our recreation, like our art center, if you're a resident. Well, Leland Cultural Art Center. Yeah, I don't believe the answer, a, but the answer would be no. I think the, yeah. the simple answer is no. no. <clears throat> so there are communities that have, you know, beach permits for residents only. Yeah, yeah. Something that, you know, creates an awe of, boy, it's great to live in Fairfield, that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that we, Everything's we, free here. We, we, we forgot that. I, I really think that that's got to go back up there for anything exactly. else. But opportunities pickleball has been something that was identified. How did we forget about that? Huh? With all the discussion we had about pickleball. Over well, that, it dovetails right into the private investment capital. That was a that privately was funded interview. Yeah. 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 So, so the capital is there for the projects that are enticing and appealing. I, I realize it's it's it's. You're going to shake your hand as if you're writing pickleball up. I would have done that too, but I've become a believer. Um, it's just a growing sport in a lot of places. Yeah. Leland now has, I would hands down say, the best indoor facility in the east, eastern seaboard, if not in the southeast. If not the only one. Not, yeah, yeah, not the, the only one. one. <clears throat> that was private investors. Well, it, here we go again. I've never heard of it. That was a what is it and where is it? So it's, it's called the Hop House of Pickleball, and it's off of a road called K Todd Road, right. directly off of Highway 17. Mm -hmm. It's within inside the overall the kind of boundaries of Brunswick Park. It was just completed this Yeah, they opened up July, August. It's a beautiful facility. Yeah, beautiful facility. And something that really appeals to your age demographic. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, it's uh, you know the, the director of the pickleball uh, organization has also said the millennials are. I was just going to say, it's swinging. Yeah. It's swinging. Back, back to uh, Chris Stevens' point earlier about uh, what can we hang our hat on. I think pickleball has uh, quite an opportunity to put Leland on the map. Well, okay. I think pickleball and possibly, you know, uh, hopefully we can develop this thing in the Rice Festival, the North Carolina Rice Festival, turn it into something. The, to compete with the Azalea Festival that Wilmington has. Now, say again the name Rice? Mm -hmm. R-I-C-E. -E. Just as in rice, that's your edible rice. It's <laughs> <laughs> edible rice. Jackie, <laughs> why do you give a lot of background? So, so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, yeah, it was, came about from the Tourism Development Authority. Um, we had the opportunity to purchase the rights to the North Carolina Rice Festival. So that's the actual festival name. Um, we're going to get it recognized as this official statewide festival. But um, we're going. the plan is to have the initial um, version of this event uh, in March of 2020. And it will be a multi-day festival. Um, and the goal is to highlight the agricultural history and also the cultural history of the area. So there were rice plantations here, which built the wealth of- uh, Important plantation, as an example. Exactly, yeah. yes. And so we're part of this corridor. It's the Gullahichi Corridor. And so there are people that have kept their culture alive and have their own language, their own food ways, their own crafts and, and art. Um, and they have been willing to partner with us um, to celebrate That's their cool. culture. And like, it, yeah. So it's like the Oyster Festival, except here. Right, yes. and but including and a lot more a lot of people. Exactly, and promoting more of So the, it's the tourism aspect. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's correct. Exactly. Travel and tourism. That's, that's perfect. Pickleball. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pickleball's in that well, category yeah. too. Yeah. Pickleball's it's not just for local. Let's do a couple of more of these because we're running on time problems here. I think you wanted to break it forward, didn't you? That's fine. <clears> I'll fix 
Well, well, I won't be able to. Well, well we've got good. another meeting at six. So. Can we say four fifteen? But I got to. I got to swing. I need some time to swing by. It's up to you guys. Yeah. Uh, I could do another half hour. Let's do fifteen. Let's go to four thirty. All right. So I thought it was an hour. We're going to land for industrial growth. This is going to wind up being one of the cornerstones, I think, of. It has to be. That's, it's, uh -huh. that's what we're doing this for. This is what we're doing this for. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You know, I, I want to be cautious I mean, to the rest of the group because it, it just makes my little short hair stand up. The misunderstanding sometimes when we use the word industrial as opposed to some other term. Because industrial, in my mind, has been categorized as more the... That we don't want to be Gary, Indiana. What's that? We don't want to be Gary, no, no, Indiana. No, no. What I'm, what I'm saying there is that <clears throat> land for... Um, help me out here. I, we're going through this with the Innovation Park. You want this kind of a light industry, high tech, high tech technology, innovative, high tech uh, innovative um, disruptive smart. technologies. I mean, you can use all of those overused terms, but they're all valid because they're all being implemented. You want a smart community, mm -hmm. a smart innovation park. Well, you know that I understand what you're saying, Bruce, but you know. Generally, when we're speaking in terms of zones, you're talking commercial, residential, or industrial. Industrial is a, is a broad-based term. And that's, I don't look at it as smokestacks anymore. I think in the last 30 years, we've been looking more at high-tech and health, uh, clean, clean light industry. That's what I've seen more in growth in any plans that I've been working on. I like so, that. I like that. I heard what you're saying. It's, it's a perception thing. It is a perception thing, and yeah. it just I just don't want it to to be casually thrown out as a term because um, for every one of you, there's ten that still think the old-fashioned way. Um, this, that see it as well. That was just a shorthand term for weaknesses, anyway. <laughs> that wasn't expected to go down into a constitution. No, no. Well, well, maybe this is you know this is a question for Gary, perhaps. Uh, with regards to at what point in the economic process does something need to be zoned for industrial? So at what point would something be required to be in an industrial zone? And what I mean by that, so if you're a high tech firm uh, that only require, really needs one gigabyte fiber optics, things of that nature, you don't necessarily be, need to be in an industrial zone. You could be along the village road corridor so what is the tipping point, I guess, that someone has to go into the industrial zone? So there's a use table, a permitted use table that defines the uses that are permitted in an industrial zone, an appropriate industrial zone, that in many cases can't be put into any other zone. Mm -hmm. The industrial zone is the lowest, least restrictive mm -hmm. zone. You can pretty much put anything in an industrial zone, generally speaking. And then the zones get refined, uh, you know, as you come through commercial mm -hmm. C1, C2, and then into residential, mm -hmm. that become much less restrictive. I guess the, maybe I didn't phrase or word the question correctly. I guess what I'm thinking of is with the fact that we have limited industrial growth, what are the industries we can target for the land we do have? And then, so what kind of you see where would, I'm going with that question? What you would look at is, Again, the permitted use table for the C1, C2 okay. commercial districts. Okay. What uses are permitted in those two? <clears throat> that think, think about the land you don't have and this. Okay. That's what I've been thinking about for the last couple of weeks. And it's a major issue for you guys. It's, your math looks like it's got measles, the one that Gary showed me. <laughs> <laughs> Could have put it worse. <laughs> but by the same token, sure. there are a lot of pockets of opportunity out there that a private investment group, properly incentivized financially, mm -hmm. could get very interested in buying up to. They've got a 
10, 15% lifetime annuity from rental income, why not? Mm -hmm. You could sell that to me. Mm -hmm. You know, one slight industry moves in, they don't move away very readily. That's true. It's big capital investment to get yourself going there. I think an opportunity to health care is an opportunity. Health care, that's pretty recession proof as well. How did you manage to attract uh, this big one that's right there in Brunswick? I think because of the aging demographics. The demographics, the demographics, the aging demographics. The demographics yeah. they yeah. see yeah. the demographic. Did they just come here because, or did you go recruit them? It, it was. That was that was an active without you know there was it was there was an active search for that they already had some uh, uh, presence in northern Brunswick County specifically in Brunswick Forest and then as they grew their practice they see that the benefits of the municipality and the, the rate of growth they see the demographics and they also see that you know Leland is going to be a driving force in Brunswick County um, and, and I think it's probably less expensive for them to build as well and many of them who are there live there. Mm -hmm. They used to have to oh, travel across the river. Forest. Okay. Or so so within course. a two mile, three mile radius of, of where that is. self-serving, okay. So yeah. Michael, to, to answer John's question, you're saying it was more, they came to us than we came to them? I, mean, I know there really was ongoing question. conversations, but I do not <clears> believe that they directly sought out from, from at least from a municipality standpoint, but there was more of a developer and that entity saw it out that this is the space that they wanted to and i'm sure you know land the location land cost the fact that they had already have had an established practice in in the, in in the new hanover building right. i think all that played into it mm -hmm. so deconstructing that there, what can we what can we learn for this conversation i mean i I think what we can learn from there is I, I think there's a, a mini medical campus that is starting to emerge in that commercial right. village between the New Hanover building, the dental practice, uh, the oral surgeon's office, the vision uh, optometrist. I, I, I think, you know, what can we you know, ascertain from all of that? I think that there's an opportunity to create as a little medical hub, and, I, and it's purely demographic based. It's purely because of the size of what the community will be at build out that you have a built in client base, and they see that although it's not a 55 plus community, the, the demographic moving there, moving from other parts of the country that are looking to retire because of all the other things we talked about low cost of living, quality of life, and, and you know. Kind of selfishly with me being at Brunswick Forest, the, the amenities package that's offered there as well. Uh, so, so, um, so this is a great example of what we want to see happen. Yeah, absolutely. This is a great example of what we want to see happen. Mm -hmm. And what we're learning is that a pr primary driver was the demographics. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's probably what I'm trying to get. That's a great way to distill it down. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, hey, I, I don't want to make it too simplistic, but that is a no, I think that's. I, I, I think to Chris's point earlier, not overthinking, and I think keeping it simple, uh, is what's going to drive this. Yeah. So essentially, what you've done here is to convert your threat. I went from lemons to lemonade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Because 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 an aging demographic is going to require services that a younger demographic will be administering, too. You know, the younger demographic will be administering those services to the aging demographic. Right. So I think that's a that's just a those are high tech jobs, you know, doctors, nurses, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. Yeah, train those nurses. That's a local community college. That's what we saw at the at the at the ribbon cutting. You had two demographics: the younger demographic, but all the ones that were employed, mm -hmm. and the people there to do the ribbon cutting were mostly retired. Or the ones that will be receiving the, uh, yeah, the, the, the hip and the knee. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want to cut through a few more of these weaknesses. Can I get rid of poorly maintained gateway highways? Because there's really little can can do about that. Mm -hmm. Why is that? That's a political issue that, that we have people that we should be able to tap into to help on that. That's a need for the area. It's a weakness. Uh, so you're talking about 87 and 133. 17 and 17. And, 17. And, and well, you weren't talking 87. No, no, no 87 is not at the top. So, so, so essentially, Highway 17, 17 from this overpass that 
pass right here over 133, which becomes Village Road, to essentially just beyond. Yeah, just beyond like the one Southern Point Railroad. Uh, yeah, the 140, that's a perfect example. And then the Village Road corridor, which is where 133 basically terminates and turns into Village Road, even though it's still 133, essentially. And if we want to be considered a center for distribution, you need you need roads. Okay. And so I, I would I right. say that we have to work hand in glove with our our political uh, uh, voices to be the squirt, be the uh, squeaky wheel to get us money to, to <coughs> add services to, to, to solve that. That's well, a yeah. hot topic too because there's already some thought being given to privatize DOT. And if we don't do that, then it'll never get done. Nobody will pay attention to it. So you have to be a squeaky wheel with that. But, and there are ways that, perfect example, there are ways of working with local civic organizations as well. Village Road is sponsored by the Leland Rotary Club. So although they're not doing road repair, from at least a beautification standpoint, they're out there picking up. Aesthetics. Yeah, from an aesthetic standpoint, just collecting trash periodically, every you know, bi-monthly or things like that. Uh, so I think there's opportunity to partner with some, like Keeping Brunswick County Beautiful, I think there's a the organization keeping Brunswick County Beautiful or a beautification project or something along those lines. So whereas at least from an aesthetic standpoint, although we may not be able to directly work on the quality of the roads immediately, at least from an aesthetic standpoint, we can keep the aesthetics looking a little bit better. You know, we're not the rotary's not out mowing the shoulders, but they are at least keeping the trash picked up. So there's a partnering issue with the county, surrounding communities schools and even economic organizations such as the Rotary Alliance and all that stuff. So you're really operating kind of as an island right now? Well, the, the relationship with the Rotary that has been ongoing, uh, so I don't know necessarily that that would be a and quite a few of us are member on this committee, I would say four out of the six of us that are present are all members of the Rotary Club for okay. now. So, all right. so sort of a best of interest, I guess, if you will. We have an application for you too, John. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a long Rotary I'm so a lion too, but there's no lion too. So. All right, what else can I get for this weakness? I was at the meeting when you Okay. <laughs> I think we fixed this haven't crystallized a unique selling proposition when we finish the strategic plan. It's okay. Okay. central. Yeah. We're going to need to finish that technology state. Public transportation, is that within your grasp? So we have a contract with WAVE, and they have a, a van bus <coughs> that travels back and forth uh, throughout the day <coughs> on a regular, <coughs> just around an hourly mm -hmm. um, cycle. They have stops throughout Leland and Navassa, and they go back and forth across the river. Really? We have two buses operating, and one. I think there are two. Two, two now. So we've been tracking the ridership over a period of time. Uh, it's very small. <laughs> it's growing, but it's growing in single digits per month, mm -hmm. okay. not single digits per day. Oh, my. Wow. Do people know about it though? Oh, well, it's it's a it's known that there's public transportation. You can see the buses yeah. mm -hmm. traveling around. Yeah, you know, there's a stop. Uh, so it's not necessarily a secret. If folks don't know about them, it's because they haven't either noticed them, they haven't seen it advertised on our website, or they haven't looked into it. Or they haven't looked into it. Really they don't have a need. Or made a phone call. And <laughs> in most likelihood, they don't have a need. The, one, the ones who don't like it are in cars who don't like it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a regional <laughs> issue. Yeah. Wilmington, even though it has public transportation, it's not ours. Yeah, the buses are empty. Yeah. Yeah. One, one thing I just wanted to ask, about, I didn't know what bucket it, bucket it fell under, but uh, in terms of broadband access, how are we with that in terms of We're ahead of that. We're ahead of Wilmington, actually. Yeah. Leland is probably the, the best wired town in this area. Um, ATMC just spent millions of dollars providing distributing fiber tech, fiber optics throughout the entire town. So, so that should be something we should be tapping into. That's a strength. That is but a strength. that's under that's, that's under utility. I didn't know if it was. That's yeah. why I think yeah. I just 
Yeah. Actually, utility infrastructure. Well, because I, I, I remember hearing at some point in time that uh, from the standpoint of education, uh, uh, it is a weakness in terms of students being able to access outside of the schools in the rural portions of our not in the rural portions of Leland, maybe no. in the rural portions the of the county. county. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Yes. yeah, in the Leland Industrial Park, it's also got yeah. fiber optic. So that, that's something with we're four hub stations. stations. That is something we should probably highlight as a. So, I'm sorry, I was thinking about what's on the board site again. Well, I, th I think uh, our broadband access, since the world is running on the internet these days, is something, and our strength in that should be highlighted for potential companies and what have you. Tele telephony too as well, right? Isn't well, yeah, because you've got VoIP. That is so so, so those, those, those are attractive to businesses, and they bring in, yeah. if they can bring in computers, you can tax computers. Yeah. I, I think the, the thing that we're learning, and I'll just give an example at one business, uh, not in the town, but still in the Leland Industrial Park, is that we can't, in the reconstruction, get fiber optic, which we have available, it's been available for over a year now. We haven't done, but after Florence, it will be done, because we lost the cell towers by virtue of wind that knocked out the internet for us. And we didn't realize how crippling that was. Mm -hmm. And that was an example of infrastructure choice that we had, one with buried cable, the other one with uh, towers that, that blew over. I mean, four of, four of the uh, stations off the tower blew out. Um, so that is an asset. I think something to capitalize on opportunities. Yeah, that goes into that crystallized, unique selling point. You know, yeah. got that. Yeah. yeah. There are major chunks of the RTC that don't have pipe. <laughs> Just still waiting for Google to put it in. Mm -hmm. that I, I think it's so obvious that we've just been missing it. I mean, she's sitting right here in the room. We have a, a great marketing director for the town. Mm -hmm. um, so that's clearly clearly an opportunity for us because not, you know, I don't know of very many municipalities that have a dedicated marketing department and PR department. I mean, there's usually people wearing multiple hats, but we have an individual that's working in conjunction with economic development, with the town, with TDA, all of those different entities to work together in a collaborative effort to create a singular, or maybe maybe multifaceted, a singular message of why life is good here, why it's great here in Leland, why you want to do business here in Leland, all of those things. So I think we have the ability to capitalize on that. Super. <clears throat> so I didn't realize that. You can pay me later. Of course. <laughs> 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 All right. When is our next session, Gary? Nancy? Uh, okay, so here's the thing. The next regular meeting is December 13th. So do you do the strategic? Yes. So it would be December 13th. All right. And, so uh, that, this... that meeting would also be at 6 p.m., not 3, 3 p.m. So it's the regular meeting that will be at 6. Okay. So I'm going to get this condensed and get it out through you yes. to everybody. Mm -hmm. And we're pretty much at the stage where we're going to start to work on strategic statements now that address these opportunities. Just for your benefit. Sir. So that's a regular meeting, so there'll be other business I understand. during that meeting. Like it was last time I was right. Right. Yeah. And I guess So we'll have like a half hour meeting. Yeah. 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 We'll have a half hour, more or less. At least, whatever the chairman and the well, we can go a little, a little later. Yeah, we can go a little later. Yeah. Really Cutting into my wine time. Well, but it but depends on, I guess, what the, the balance of the meeting has on the agenda. Okay. It's not much but you bring in your bottle, you will have it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and if, we, if we put that, that hour, if that's what it's going to be at the end of the meeting, it's just.
encouraging us to enthusiastically rush through this next session. Right. Ram it up. We can do that. Uh, one thing uh, I got to bring up to the committee chair too is we're talking about as a uh, council about a heliport. Yeah. Leave it. Yeah. Yeah, you call pickleball, don't bring people to heliport to bring industry to uh, see off CFOs and so forth for corporations besides emergencies and many other things. So we're just going to discuss that. In fact, I got a list of questions here. I'm going to give it to the committee. Yeah, we got and, uh, you know, Right. And then we're going to discuss that part too because I think it's better. There, there is no help for it. Where is there help for it? Mm -hmm. Here, here, here. There is no help. There is a question from uh, Mike Callahan. Mike Callahan, yeah. Yeah, we were yeah. going to. I was going to get with Gary and see if we'll put that on the agenda. Yeah. Next week. Okay. Yeah, because that, that's the thing we're talking about. Talking about the hospital out here and stuff like that. Emergency, emergency and stuff like that. The woman said, I don't think the uh, hospital has a help. They do have one. They so have they'd be the only one that would be. Uh, they have would be. Right. Nothing in Brooklyn County at all. Southport's got one. Southport, oh, just. Uh, yeah, Dosha uh, Hospital has one. Oh, Dosha Hospital. Oak Island has one. Yeah, it does, does not. Um, yeah, I'll tell you, the other one is. Uh, mm -hmm. What's Doja across from 17 mm -hmm. has one? Navant does not. Navant? Wow. Wow. Um, now, now, let me say something. They may, th there are dedicated spaces for helicopters to land that are mapped out with the aviation authority because I talked to the fire chief about this. They're, they aren't necessarily dedicated pads, but they are mapped out on aviation maps as places where a helicopter can safely land if necessary. Right across the street during Hurricane Florence, uh, the twin bladed helicopters landed and took off on a regular basis every day. Uh, right across the street from us. Yeah. So the two or three or four times yes. that I've seen a helicopter yes. land in yes. Nova, the half a dozen times I've seen a helicopter land in Nova, I mean, I go by that every day. I don't think it's a dedicated pad. I might be wrong. Okay. I mean, they have to individually get approval every time, or is no, it just a no, designated it's just a, it's place? It's a designated place. Okay. okay. That okay. would make sense. It's lost in the deep. It's, it's not, not a big pad. deal to have a helipad. It's what a pad is. It's just a side of a, you know, it's two basketball courts with a lighted perimeter and a windsock. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's right. That's it. I'm thinking they have a helicopter grass area. <laughs> not a pad. It's a helicopter lawn. All right, so I'll see you folks in two weeks. So for another good session. Thank Kudos you, Kudos to John. John. Thank you. I've uh, entertained a motion to adjourn some of Second. second. Motion to the second. All in favor in discussion? All in favor say aye. All opposed? Stay aye. here. Aye.